Hi, welcome back to the introduction to Python programming tutorial. We're entering section seven, tuples and lists. And we have kind of discussed lists a little bit in the previous lessons because we needed to in some of our examples. But we're also going to cover tuples, which are very similar to lists in this lesson. And we're going to explain what the list is in more detail as well. The lesson objectives for this lesson include understanding the following tuples, lists, tuples versus lists. And then of course, at the bottom there, we have our commit, which is related to getting the resources out of our get version control system. Tuples, a finite ordered list of items. So in the screenshot, we can see that we have an example of uh, tuples. And one big difference between the list and the tuple is the type of bracket that's used to create them. A list is square brackets and a tuple is round brackets. So the first bullet point is creating tuples. We can say A equals empty rounded brackets. That's an empty tuple. And then we can say A equals uh, in quotes one and then a comma or below that within rounded brackets one and a comma as well. That comma is actually a little bit important for creating a tuple because if you forget it, what you end up creating is a string data object. Now, one big difference between the tuple and the list is the tuple is immutable. You cannot change the contents of the tuple without making a new data object. Now that's different from the list, which is mutable. So within a list, you can change the value of one of the uh, list items and not for, and not have to make a new list data object. Iteration operations such as for and in work the same way as they would with a list. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. Lists, a list of items. Creating lists, we use the square brackets. Uh, we don't need a comma for this, uh, for creating a list versus a tuple. It works a little bit differently there. The lists are immutable. You can change an item without a Python creating, a new, without Python creating a new data object. And iteration, operations such as for and in work the same way as they would with a tuple. So there we go. On uh, line 11, where we change B1 to the word three, we would not create a new data object. Let's take a quick look back at the tuple to see if there was an example there. So on line 11, where we see A equals A plus B, we would definitely create a new data object there, or Python would in the background. So back list, let's go forward again. Tuples versus lists. Why use one over the other? Well, it's more or less efficiency versus utility. Lists have greater utility via special object functions. Tuples can be more efficient as they take up less space because they are immutable and they don't support the different list operations that the list has. So tuples can be more efficient with the question mark. Tuples are immutable. If you attempt to change, if you attempt changes, Python will generate new data objects. Do that too often and the tuple becomes an inefficient choice. So if you have a list of items and you never intend to change the values or you don't expect the values to change, then a tuple might be the more appropriate choice. If however, you have a list of items and you expect to be making many changes to those items, you're going to want to use a list. Because even though a tuple can be more efficient, it becomes less efficient if you're constantly creating new data objects to make many changes to the items. So what's the safest choice? Generally, lists are used more often than tuples. And if you are unsure, you probably just want to use the list and avoid the tuple. If you're confident that your list of items won't be changed too often, then the tuple will be a safer choice. But if you're not sure, just go with the list. Let's see if we can answer this uh, question on 15. How many data objects were created? So on uh, line two, we created data object. On line five, we create a new list. So that's creating a new data object again, because we didn't alter the contents of this list. We actually created a new list. So that's two. And then we have B creating a data object here, which is another list. So that's three. You change a list item. The list is mutable. So no new data object is created here. So we created three data objects. Let's go ahead and jump into the lab environment and take a look at the lesson resources, go through the questions and answers related to this lesson. All right, here we are in the lab section. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to right click in my directory, get bash here, which is where my Git project is. I'm in section six, so I'm going to switch to um, 
section seven. First, I'm going to do a git reset hard just in case there's some changes in there that I just want to ignore and throw them away. Then I'm going to do a git checkout. I'm going to put in the right commit, which for this lesson is 786 AD5. Now, the neat thing about uh, a git project is, is that if you have some, some trouble and something just really got messed up, you can always just re-download the Git project from GitHub and start over. There'd be no problems with that. Now, if you've changed sections and you do a Git status, and it says that you're head detached at 786.8.5.7, so you're in the right commit zone, uh, you can throw away that extra folder. Because if, for example, if you change, you still saw section six here, just throw it away or delete it and then proceed through your section seven folder. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Be sure to take a look at the cheat sheet. There's some additional information on these. And then let's go ahead and take a look at a example. This is just from the, um, the slideshow that we went through. <clears throat> All right, here we are, we have an empty list. So we just can just run that and see that it works. And that's a list printing out right there. Now, one thing that gets mentioned on the cheat sheet is a list of lists. So we could put a, um, list within a list. So, so let's say we have a list C equal, uh, we'll just say it's equal to the same thing that B is equal to without actually putting C equal to B because that would just have two variables pointing to the same data object. In this way, we have two data objects. And then let's say we have a D data object. Let me say we put that equal to B comma C. So we are making a list because of these brackets and we're putting a list in that list. Let's print that out and see what that looks like. So we're going to print D. Let's run an example two. And we can see that we do. We have a list within a list. Not too bad. And that has a lot of utility for uh, various things that we'll probably cross some of those things when we start uh, doing some more advanced programming, solving some work problems and whatnot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. I'm going to go back to the exercises. Let's take a look at the questions. What is the key difference between tuples and lists? When should you use one over the other? Okay, that's discussed in the slideshow. How many data objects are created by the following code? All right, so that'd be something we would need to count. Um, and of course, we would need to understand mutable and immutable and the concept of data objects to answer that question correctly. And then task three, creating three item lists. Change the value of each item in the list, how many data objects were created. So again, we're pretty much trying to drive home uh, what data objects are and when they're created by the Python engine and uh, you know the variable versus the data object. So pause the video, take a stab at those tasks and because uh, I'm about to go over them. Okay, let's go ahead and go over the answers to those. Make sure that all those answers make sense. So task one answer, tuples are immutable, yes, and more, and more efficient by taking up less space. Lists are mutable and have a lot of additional methods that can be used, such as clear, copy, etc. So there's all these different functions that are pre-programmed into the list data object. And those pre-programmed functions take up space, which is ultimately what makes the list less efficient than a tuple. Use a list over a tuple if you anticipate changes to the data values. All right, that's everything we talked about in the slideshow. Task two, three data objects were created. B1 being a list reference changes the value without creating a data object. Now let's go look at that code and make sure that that uh, makes sense, that I didn't make a mistake there. So A creates a data object, B creates a data object, A creates another data object when it does A plus A, and then B1 does not, it changes the value of a item, but a list is immutable. So that's permitted and it does not create a new dead object. So that was three. All right. And then task three answer. Let's see. Only one dead object because lists are mutable. Their list values can be changed without creating new dead objects. Does that make sense? Create a three item list. Change. Okay, so I didn't show the code there, but go ahead and be sure to program that out if you need to uh, help understanding mutable and immutable. Change the value of each item in the list. So there's only three items to change. 
And how many data objects were created? Well, just one, because we created one list. The list is mutable. We changed all the values in that list, but because it's mutable, that didn't create any new data objects. All right, let's jump back at the slideshow and close this lesson out. All right, here we are. We already went through this slide. Let's jump to the next one. Section conclusion, what we learned about, we learned about the following, tuples and lists, utilization versus efficiency, which is uh, when to use the tuple and when to use the list. And there, was so, there wasn't a lot in this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you.